Hi friends, uh, this is Amit Sadhu Khan. I am a student of IV Professional School and as a part of a research project, I will be doing a project on MCX gold prices using MySQL. Since I am working in a stockbroking firm, I have to deal with prices of equity, commodities and currencies all the time. That is why I have chosen MCX gold prices as my uh, SQL project. So the contents of this research project is I'll be downloading a nine year daily historical gold prices from MCX, which will be dollar denominated in nature. And the table will contain the following attributes. These are date, open, low, high, close, adjusted close, volume, and the percentage change. Findings I'll gather from this uh, research is the dates with the highest volatility, 10 dates with the highest volume, the month and the year wise count of days when gold prices closed above and below its open price, the 10 day moving average on closing prices and it will be plotted against the closing prices and the yearly average prices for 9 years. The objective of this study will be to analyze the prices for the time periods and publish the data using data analysis tools in MySQL. The important attributes among all the attributes I will gather from the table are the closing price, the volume, the volatility which is high minus low and the date of occurrence. The methodology of this project is we will be gathering the uh, data from the MCX website which will be dollar denominated. So I will show you the data. This will be the data with the attributes and uh, the only change I have made is uh, since uh, this data was in a shorter format, I have converted this into a longer format which is readable by MySQL and I have saved the file in CSV commerce separated value format which is readable by MySQL. So since the data was large, we will have to uh, import this data from the command prompt tool. So if this was a shorter form, shorter data, uh, I could have just gone to my SQL database and use the table wizard to import the data. But since it was a larger data, so what we'll be doing is primarily we'll be making a database with the same attribute as it is in the table. So basically I have created a table called price data which will contain the date, open, high, low, close, adjusted close, volume and the percentage change exactly as it is in my original table. The only change will be that I have kept the date in a text format intentionally so that um, I can convert the date later into a date format of MySQL. And the way I do it in command prompt is uh, I uh, to import the data is I go into the command prompt and I have saved my codes so that it is uh, easy. So basically uh, I'll be changing my directory to the bin directory of uh, MySQL so that I'll just show you here. So I have logged into my bin directory and now I'll be logging into my SQL through command prompt. So my username is root and I'll just provide the password so that I can log into my SQL from CMD. So here you see I have logged into my SQL and um, it will ask me uh, it, I can access my database and everything from CMD. So I'll just make a provision uh, to import a data, which is this one, this line set global local in file equal to one. So I'll just paste this here and it will say that, okay, you can, you know, import the file. So I'll just quit now. I'm back to my bin directory. 
now i'll just log in again but this time i'll just set local in file equal to 1 and use my same username and password now it will ask for my password and now i am ready to import my file so basically i have uh, saved the file in my desktop and uh, and i have also created the file in my sql database so i'll just use show database to see what what my databases are these are the list of my databases i've created so gold price over here is the key database i want to access so i'll use this code The database has been changed to gold prices. Now what I'll do is um, I have created this uh, price data table in gold database. What I'll be doing is this is the command to import the data into MySQL. But I won't be executing it because I have already done it. The only change you have to notice is that I have these are two backslashes and um, the reason is my uh, while importing the file you have instead of one you have to use two backslashes and uh, the path of the file should be between single inverted commas and uh, here you see I have I'll import the data into the price data table and the fields are terminated by comma since it is a comma separated value format and enclosed by double backslash sorry it double quotes and I'll just ignore the first row because it contains the header. So I'm not executing it right now, but if I do it, all the data will be imported in MySQL. So this is the process of importing the data in MySQL through command prompt. Now moving on, after I've uh, done importing, so I'll be able to view my data and we'll be doing the further proceedings. So to find the 10 top daily highest volatility days, I have written the code and I'll execute it right here. There you go. The top, top 10 volatility days. So here are the volatility days and I've ranked it in order. So I've just pasted the output in my presentation. Yes. The top volatility day was in 2013 followed by few consecutive dates in 2020. Since 2020 was a Corona period. So the volatility days were seen at that time period. Moving on, the top 10 daily highest volume days. That means the number of days which were seen as a high volume days. So I'll be executing similarly the code here. And the output is what I've pasted in the presentation. These are the dates. 2014, especially if you see, are the top 10 daily highest volume days. The reason was that was a low inflation period and people used to hoard precious metals uh, in physical quantities where they anticipated that in the future that might rise and, and that actually was later proven right. These are the observations I have made and I have just stated. The month and the year wise count of days when gold prices closed above and below its open price. For this you will we'll go into MySQL and uh, we have written the code right here and we'll just execute it right now and here you see uh, we have the month column and the year column and we can ma make this uh, deduction that on the year March of 2012 there were 7 instances or 7 days where um, gold prices closed above its uh, open and there were nine instances where gold price prices co uh, closed below its open 
so basically we can say that march 2012 was a down month similarly if we see uh, november 2012 there were 12 instances where gold prices closed above its open and seven where it closed below its open so it was basically an up month so we'll gather this data and we'll put it in the presentation here you see next is chart of closing price and 10 sma for the last six months uh, for, uh, for simplicity purpose we have taken six months because if we took more than six months the chart would have been much more flatter and it would have been difficult to differentiate between sma and the pr closing price so this is uh, 10 sma the red line is 10 sma and uh, the close is the green line so basically like sma we can uh, also plot rsi stochastics and other various indicators on the closing prices and the last finding we have is chart of annualized average closing prices for this we have written this code and we'll execute it right now are the average prices per year for 2012 it was 12 1 to 1 3 dollars 2013 it was 764 dollars so we'll take this data and plot it in the my presentation Overall, the price of gold were in an upward trend. From this observation, we can assume that. Thank you guys. I had a really fun time explaining to you about the gold prices and its effect. Thank you. Thank you.